So 2008, real estate market crashed. And I was thinking to myself, how in the world can I take advantage of this crashing? Well, I didn't have enough money at that time. I was a real estate agent. So I said to myself, okay, what can I do that nobody else is doing to make myself different than everybody else? I started to buy all of the advertising in Los Angeles. So if you opened up the LA Times, it would basically read Mauricio Yumansky, Mauricio Yumansky, Mauricio Yumansky. So the perception became that the only person selling during this terrible time was Mauricio Yumansky. I ended up becoming the number seven agent in the country, number one in all of California in that year. So that was the birth, in essence, of the agency. My family moved to the U.S. back in 1976. I was six years old. It was a time in Mexico where the politics were very in turmoil. There was a lot of nationalism in terms of the government taking away businesses. There was a major devaluation of the peso. Uh, um, and so my family really moved for two reasons. My father's family wanted to have a diversification of the business that they had created, that my grandfather created. The brothers, there were three brothers. Two of the brothers stayed in Mexico and my father moved to Los Angeles to start a textile company, Fabrics. And the reason that's important is because that helped shape me in what I now do, which is selling. And selling all my life. Back uh, in, my, in my second year of college, when I was going to Santa Monica College, my father called me up one day and he said, listen, time for you to make a decision in your life in terms of what it is that you want to do. Get to work or get to school. And I wasn't a very good student. Today, we would have known that I had major ADD. Back in those days, we didn't really diagnose it that way. And if I would have done, I probably would have been a great student. I would have loved it and had a ton of fun. So I said to my dad, I said, Dad, let me uh, think about it for two days. Called him back up on Monday. And I said, Dad, I think I'm ready to get to work. What my dad did is he gave me the, all the bad accounts, you know, the accounts that nobody was selling. And within a year and a half, we grew the company from uh, three, $400,000 a year in sales to about $30 million of sales. And that was just something extraordinary. But the problem was we were doing garment dye. When you do garment dye, things shrink and they don't shrink at the same pace. Well, back in those days when it wasn't perfect, it was just a return. So we had some problems. We ultimately had to sell the company. You know, sometimes in life, what you need is you need a tragedy in order to create something great. How did you and I meet, honey? We met at a nightclub. It was called Bar One, and now it's called Bootsy Bellows. Bellows. Right, and yeah. um, so she was out there, and I actually thought she, I had heard that, uh, and was told that she was Demi Moore's sister. And that was so, the rumor. That was the rumor. And so I saw her at the nightclub and I was thinking to myself, oh my God, well, there's Demi Moore's sister and she looks like Demi. And, you know, if I can't get Demi, I might as well get her sister. And so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then here we are 25 years later, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they always say that behind every great man, there's a great woman. Well, I can tell you that I have a great woman in front of me, not behind me. And Kyle has just been there for me from the beginning when we had absolutely nothing and super supportive and always a motivational person and always just helped me get my head back on track in terms of where I was going. And we were living in a condo on, in, on Swall Beverly in Hills, Beverly Hills. Yeah. Uh, it was a two bedroom with two kids. At that time we just had the two. We, we were the there two. until we had three kids though. Right. Squished everybody. Like two kids <laughs> in one room and then the baby and our the crib in our room with the third baby. And that's when Kyle and I sat down and she said to me, you know, we should go get our real estate license together. We made it a date night. And hire a babysitter once a week and we can go to Santa Monica College together and that'll be our date night. And, and we we'll would get eat, our licenses together. And we'll get our licenses together and we would eat out of the vending machine 
at, remember you at yeah. the campus in Santa Monica College? And um, yeah, and then we both got our real estate license and switched the paths. A new path in my life started selling real estate, which was really what I always loved. Architecture, design, interior design, all of these things. I started to work for my brother-in-law, uh, Rick Hilton at Hilton and Highland. He gave me a job. I would call him and he would be on the golf course. And I was like, what are you doing on the golf course? And he would say, well, there's no business. And then I would tell you that I was finding business on the golf course. Yeah, and I would say, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the first year on that job, I think I made $180,000. And I said something to myself. I said, I'm never going to allow myself to have a lesser year than the previous year. And for 25 years, I never had a lesser year than the previous year, with the exception of the year I started the agency. When you're starting a business, you're taking risks, right? With risks, there's always the chance of failure. Failure occurs because of fear, because of doubt. Certainty versus doubt, never doubt yourself. It's like on the golf course. You're ready to pull the trigger. You're sitting there for a 120 yard shot. You got the pitching wedge out. You start thinking to yourself, shit, there's too much wind. You shank it and you're in the trees, right? You have certainty, that ball's gonna get there. It's gonna be just fine. But if you don't take those risks, you'll never get anywhere. What we did at the agencies, we changed the way you sell real estate. We're gonna sell real estate through storytelling, through lifestyles. So when I sell you a home, I tell you about what you're gonna be doing. So this home that we're in right now, we're gonna be playing golf, we're gonna to go to the clubhouse, we're gonna meet a bunch of great people, and out of those great people that you're gonna meet, you're gonna do five deals, and guess what? You just made a bunch of money by owning this house, right? Now the problem is that all of our competitors have realized that, they're starting to try to teach that, they're trying to copy that, but you know what you can't copy in a company? You can't copy culture. And that is really what sets us apart. And the culture of the agency is defined by two rules. Rule number one, no assholes. Rule number two, we like to have fun. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm really excited now. I'm gonna go show you guys uh, two amazing homes with my daughters and two of my favorite homes in the city. Certainly, uh, they're just incredible and let's go have some fun. Today, I'm proud to say that we have 36 offices in four different countries. I've just hired a new president. I'm super excited about that. I call her the POTA, president of the agency. And for me to see the woman take that kind of role, having four daughters, really fills my life. There's Ferry. Oh, this looks nice finished. I haven't All seen right? it forever. I know. How are you, my love? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. What we've done is we've created the Umansky team within the agency. And the Umansky team is a basically a team that still sells real estate. And it's a lot of fun because now I get to sell real estate with my daughter, Farah, who is a superstar, just an all-star real estate agent. My daughter, Alexia, who is getting going and is just so creative. And we're really lucky because we actually also get to work with my father, Eduardo. And then just most recently, we've added my sister. So back in the days when we were doing 90265, my sister was in charge of production. I was in charge of sales. And now we have basically the exact same thing for the Umansky team with my father and my sister, and we've added my two daughters to it. And so it's just so much fun. I've always been in the family business. One of the things that's very important for us is to be able to separate all of that time that we spend together with cameras at work, with me and my daughters at my work, and to really be able to spend time together as a family without any distraction, without anything. And we make sure that the family goes away on vacations. One of our favorite vacations is to charter a yacht and go out into the Mediterranean Sea. At the yacht, guess what? They don't even know this, but I get to lock them up and they have nowhere to go. If they want to go somewhere, they're swimming. So I get a bunch of hours with them on that boat and that's our favorite vacation and that's how we all stay really super tight. From the perspective of what we're doing with the agency and the Umansky team, you know, if my daughters decide, all of them, if the four of them decide to work in real estate, they have an opportunity, they have something to go into, which as a father, you always just want to be able to give opportunities to your kids building the agency, creating the agency, all of the sacrifices, 
you know, hopefully what that does is that allows us to leave something, you know, leave a business, leave a legacy, create a legacy, not leave a legacy, but create a legacy. The opportunity, it's the land of opportunity. And I gotta tell you something, as an immigrant, you know, coming to Los Angeles young, uh, having my ups and downs, there is no doubt that I am now living the American dream. It's actually quite interesting because this is 90265, which is my clothing brand that I started with my father. You don't have too many photos it's of It's just stuff my anymore. legs and my hand and nothing else. There. No, don't cover them. They're cute. I was 24 years old. Leave me alone. They're still cute.